So in uh, chapter two that we are going to be working on, uh, we're going to be talking about a bunch of uh, different uh, items that have to do with rent and uh, some pretty big expenses. But uh, I wanted to touch base on that last one, really follow up about the general contractor. Uh, you know, one of the funny stories over the years is uh, one time uh, I had a general contractor show up with a uh, hammer, one hammer. That's it. And uh, that, that story is... Uh, is is in there and it's always interesting to uh to to see people's reaction but uh one hammer did the job actually uh, just for the first couple of days because uh, they didn't have enough people i guess so i'm on page uh page 33 over here in the book and uh, i am looking at the rent and i'm looking at uh will the business being pay business be uh, paying rent or mortgage and uh, you know if there's a way that you can purchase the space that you are going into, that's the most uh, opportune thing that you can really do. And then have the restaurant pay rent to yourself and ultimately pay down the building and you uh, gain the equity throughout the years of being in that space. Now, a lot of times that, that, it, that does not happen. Uh, and ultimately you have to, you have to rent the space. Now, you know, I always like to say, and I, I'm not sure if it's in this book or not, uh, but I know I've mentioned it many times is, you know, really think about this. Why is it that restaurants pay so much money for rent and leasing a building? And then when you go to uh, look at the office space, the office space is more than half is cheap. So if you were paying 40 bucks a square foot for a restaurant, all of a sudden it's only 15 or 14 for, uh, for the, the office space. You know, sooner or later, the restaurant should really say, okay, enough is enough. You know, we, we're paying enough. But the, the rent can get very expensive if your sales are not coming in. And that's really what this is all about. Um, if you are buying it uh, or if you're renting uh, or leasing the space, the goal is to, with your forecast of budget or with your sales is to really keep your um, percentage of rent or occupancy uh, below 5%. And that way there you can actually make some money. But once it gets over 7, 8, 9 and it comes up 10%, you're not going to make much money. It's that, that means your sales are lower than really what they need to. So you want to maintain a good profitability. And uh, if you are buying the space, uh, Ultimately, that's the best goal if you can do it. So that's really what this this whole little chapter is about. And uh, the other part is is when you go into the um, the space itself, you have to start thinking about the landlord because you're in business and you're in bed with that person. And um, I've seen some really great ones. I've seen some really poor ones, really poor ones. And um, sometimes they just don't care about you. All they want to know is making sure that they get their rent every single every single month. And uh, they don't care about the taxes going up. They don't care anything. They just know that you're supposed to pay them and tough luck. So keep that in mind. You know, we all work really, really hard in the restaurant business. And uh, when it comes down to it, when the landlords are out there and you're working for them, it's not fun anymore. And when it's not fun, we lose people in the industry. So keep that in mind. The uh, next one I have is an example loan versus a lease calculation, and and that's a, that's an actual uh, breakdown. So you know if you are, had a twenty year loan, uh, the mortgage payment would be twenty six thirty nine a month compared to uh, I think I have it down that was only ten dollars and fifty five cents a square foot if you owned the space, but if you didn't own it, uh, you know it would it would be let's see here I have it in this book here. I think it's about uh, twenty dollars. It's twice as much. So keep that in mind when you're uh, looking for a space. And the other part is, is there's a common area maintenance or cam costs that are involved in this particular it, in a lease. So if you're leasing it, that cam cost you have to pay for it. And that's just that's what this whole story is about. And this whole page is the real estate taxes. Same exact thing. And the real estate taxes. If it's a brand new building, you might get uh, by on one year or two years paying a, a minimal uh, tax basis. But once the value is um, assessed, the true value, and all of a sudden your taxes go up, you might not be too happy about it because the taxes could end up uh, taking up 5 or $6 more per square foot 
which ultimately that comes out of your pocket as well. Now, in this same chapter, I talk about the utilities and the gas and the electric. You know, the electric bill, it's going to be expensive. There's no question about it. You could be in um, California. You could be in New York. You could be in Florida. Either way, you're going to have air conditioning on all the time. You're going to have your makeup air in the kitchen on all the time. And when that happens, your electric bill is just going round and round and round. It never stops. So, if you want to know, you know, I've seen electric bills as high as $4,500 a month. I've seen them uh, probably uh, low as maybe $3,000. But uh, overall, it's very expensive on the electricity. On the gas, depends on what you're using. And that's what this story is about and this whole little chapter is about as well. Now, the other part, <laughs> the other part is, is on here, we also have some operational costs that are on here. Uh, it talks about, you know, there's there's a lot of costs going in a restaurant all the time. And uh, I, I think I had mentioned that in another um, segment that I was doing, or maybe it was a podcast I was talking with somebody. You know, we got three or four uh, choices of income in a restaurant and how many expenses going out. We're always writing a check. But the goal is, is really to watch your expenses. If you're watching your expenses, uh, that's half the battle. But if you're not paying attention to it and that air conditioning is on from 11 o'clock at night when nobody's there until 8 in the morning or 10 in the morning when nobody is still there and it's on 70 degrees, you know what, that air conditioner, bump it up in the evening hours so it's like 74, 75, so that way there you're not wasting all that money. So the expense and the operational cost in a restaurant is by far very important. And it's more important to that last manager who's leaving or the last chef. Those people should be walking around the restaurant too. And that's that's really part about what this this really is. Now, before we finish up on this last chapter, uh, you know, I go into a, a real life story on this one. And this particular one has to do with the valet. And uh, this, this did happen, it was a very interesting night. A uh, gentleman came out, pointed to the car, that is my car. And um, it wasn't his car, but he drove off with it anyway. And it was later at night. Um, second guy shows up and says, that's my car, or where is my car? And um, the car wasn't there. So he called the police. It wasn't fun. The uh, first gentleman who took the car, he probably had a little too much to drink. He was with his wife or a significant other. And uh, they ended up turning around. They came back. It, almost a fight started. Uh, it wasn't really that much uh, it wasn't fun, but it was interesting because I had never seen that before. But these stories that happen in the restaurants all the time. And this just happens to be one that uh, I, I find it kind of odd because everybody has walked down to the valet and has said, that's my car. Oh, I'll take that one. And the valet knows what to do. They're supposed to wait for the ticket and they're supposed to get the right number match it up. If it doesn't match, no, they don't give it away. But I think the valet was on a uh, in a hurry that night. So, so that's it for uh, that chapter. We're going to uh, see you at the next chapter.